Welcome to Describe in One Word. I'm Daniela, and if I were to describe ring pops in one word, it would be with childhood, since I'm a 90s kid. For the first type of ring pop, all you need is Jolly Ranchers. Put a few of your favorite flavor in the microwave for 10 second increments until it's all melted. Then pour the mixture into this cute ring mold. Of course, fix any imperfections you might have. Then after it's cooled and set, pop it out and you have a cute little Jolly Rancher ring pop. I also found this adorable jewel mold online and I'll put links to both the molds down below. The technique for this one is the same. Just melt down the Jolly Ranchers and pour it into the molds. Then to make these jewels into a ring pop, use the back of an already eaten ring pop that you've washed. Place it on top of one of the gems, making sure it's touching the top of the candy. I next wanted to experiment to make some swirly ring pops. Do you remember twisted ring pops? That's the inspiration here. To make these, melt down different colors of Jolly Ranchers and scoop all the different colors, mixing them into the molds as you go. The ones that I think came out the coolest was actually from this blue-green-pink combination because it really got all the rainbow colors. After they cooled, I popped them out and I was so impressed at how cute and colorful they all turned out. And remember that rainbow one I made? Look at how it shines in the light. Oh, I love it. They're all so pretty. And here's the traditional ring pop. It came out perfect. But if you're feeling a little more daring, you can make your own ring pop flavors by mixing a cup of sugar, a third cup of corn syrup, and a half cup of water while shooing your cat away. Oh my God, this cat. Don't worry, all measurements are in the description. Place the mixture on medium heat until it reaches a boil and use a wet brush to wipe down the sides. Keep cooking until the candy reaches the hard crack stage. This is when you pour it into ice water and as you can see, it forms strings that break when you bend it. The other option is to rely on a candy thermometer to reach 300 degrees like I did the first time, which is how I ended up with this lovely burnt candy. Whichever method you choose, take it off the heat and place it into an ice bath to prevent further cooking. Now it's time to add your color and flavor. I went with orange creamsicle, yum. Then pour it into your molds, and hopefully you'll do better than me and not spill the candy absolutely everywhere. Even if you do, just put on some heat-resistant gloves and pick up the excess candy and melt it down again and continue filling the molds. After it's cooled, I found it easy to just slam the mold on the table to break off any of the excess and then just demold the candy. For the ring mold, I completely forgot to wipe off the excess while it was still warm, so it's not a big deal. If it happens to you, just grab a knife and break off that center part so you can wear it as a ring. I made so many different kinds of ring pops and candy gems, and take it from me, as long as you don't burn your candy, they'll all come out delicious. I and my cat really love doing this candy DIY, so if there are other candy DIYs you'd like me to do, let me know in the comments below. I'd personally love to do a Tootsie Pop DIY, so if you like that idea, give this video a like, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're not ready to go just yet, click on one of the videos to watch one of my previous DIYs, and there's still time to win one of the Minecraft squishies, so click on the video on the left to learn how to win one.